Hello, good day. So, welcome to another discussion on our subject, which is GE1. So, let's talk about Chapter 1, the self from various perspectives. So, perspective is a particular attitude toward or way of regarding something. A point of view. So, when we say perspective, basically, it's the opinion of an individual about something, someone, or anything that comes up in his or her mind. So, we have different perspectives here. We have philosophy, sociology, anthropology, and even psychology. Now, let's take a look at this. Pictures. Okay, so in picture number one, what images or image can you see? So I can see a rabbit and a duck. Mm -hmm. Picture number two, I can see a face and a woman and man sitting. Picture number three, oh, there's a skull and two girls with a puppy. Okay, I hope you also see them. So it, it is basically depends on how on how you look at the pictures, on how you perceive these different pictures. Okay, how about this picture? Can you see the circles moving around? No? So it's not just circling ba sila. So when if you can see the circles moving around, it means that you are stressed. Okay, so I can see the picture or the image moving around, so I'm stressed. So if you cannot see them moving around, it means that you are not stressed at all, which is very, very good. Okay, so what is self? So let's define self in terms of Cultural aspect of an individual. So we have East and West. So the Eastern part of the world, we have the Asian continents or the Asian can countries rather, not continents, Asian countries. And then on the Western part of the world, we have the European and the American. Okay, so let's have a yes or no question. Uh, Family orientedness is more it's placed more emphasis on the eastern part of the world. So yes or no. Okay, so the answer is yes. Very good. How about this one? Physical appearances are more prioritized in the Western countries. Yes or no? All right, yes. Why physical appearances? Um, if you can look, if you look at their models, they are very thin and they have different um, retoque on their faces. So they place more emphasis on their physical appearances. So how about this picture number three? A man is shouting me and a group is saying we. So me is towards individual dualism on the western part of the world while we represents the eastern part of the world okay so that is self in terms of the cultural aspect of an individual okay is there even such a construct of the self so do you believe that you are trying to build up yourself you are you are under construction you construct yourself little by little until you notice there are different changes around you so let's see here so there's a cat looking at the mirror and he or she suddenly saw a lion so in yourself what do you see yourself do you see yourself as a happy person a positive person a happy-go-lucky person, a kind person. So if that is what you see to yourself, that is very good. And if other people don't notice it around you, that you are kind, you are helpful, you are very optimistic, um, don't be bothered of their judgments or their assumptions about you. Because what's important is that you know 
who you are and you know yourself. Okay. So let's start. So philosophy. So what is philosophy? It is the it is the study of general and fundamental questions about existence, knowledge, values, reason, mind, and language. So we have here a picture of a heart plus a book with a tree. So that means philosophy is the love of knowledge. All right. So philosophy is the love of knowledge and the persons who loves knowledge are called the persons okay are called philosophers so philosophy comes from the greek word philosophia which means love of knowledge so let's talk about this let's talk about more of understanding or defining the self with different philosophers let's start with this guy so who is this guy we have Socrates. Okay, so Socrates is a Greek philosopher whose way of life, character, and thought exerted a profound influence on ancient and modern philosophy. So the influence of Socrates comes from the ancient until today, which is the modern philosophy. Or even now, right now, we are still studying about him. So he is known as the father of philosophy. He was condemned to death for his Socratic method of questioning. So what is this Socratic method of questioning? Later on, we will find out. So who is Plato in the life of Socrates? What role did Plato put in the life of Socrates? Okay, so we all know that Plato is the student and Socrates is the teacher. But what, what is the most important role of Plato? So we have there, Plato is the one who writes the doctrines, the scriptures, the articles, or the journals of Socrates. Okay, so he is the writer and Socrates is the author. <laughs> okay, so he believed that philosophy should achieve practical results for the greater well-being of society. He attempted to establish an ethical system based on human reason rather than theological doctrines. So there you go. So he believed that philosophy should achieve practical results for the greater well-being of society. He attempted to establish an ethical system based on human reason rather than theological doctrine. So Socrates placed emphasis more on the human reason as he believed that, hum that humans are capable of reasoning out their thoughts, reasoning out their own opinions, and gaining their own information about everything that they want to have their opinion on it, so, rather than theological doctrines or religious scriptures. Yes. Okay. So what, is the what is this Socratic method all about? So, posting a question and answer, which eventually leads to further questions. So, ito yung tanong na kaya mong sagutin, tapos mag-come up ka ulit ng another questions. Na kaya mo ulit sagutin, tapos another question and question. Example, bakit ako nandito? Kasi gusto kong mag-aral, sayang naman yung mga panahon or oras kapag hindi ako nag-enroll or nag-aral. Paano ba ako maging sa successful sa pag-aaral ba? Siguro pwede or sa discarded, eh, pwede rin sa magpagiging discarded eh, today. So, paano ako magiging ma-discarded? Eh? Um, by sharing or by even researching, no, sa Facebook, tignan ko kung ano yung mga pinakapatok ngayon sa online selling. So, that is way of having Socratic method of questioning. So, you literally question yourself about different questions on your first topic and then redirect lang. So, the oldest and still the most powerful teaching tactic for fostering critical thinking. So, why critical thinking? Because you are using your mind. You are using your rationalized thought to answer that question and to rationalize again another question and answer that question and answer. So, remember, 
if you're answering a question, nako-foster yung mind natin. Na-exercise yung mind natin because we are actually thinking. Know thyself. So this is the most famous quote of Socrates. It indicates that man should stand and live according to his nature. So what is this? What is my nature? So my nature is that I am I am a girl, I am a female, and I live in Pangasinan. So that is my nature. I know that I'm from Pangasinan. So in the words of Socrates, we all have the knowledge of ourselves, and we just have to have wisdom or learn to recollect. So we all know our name, we know our age, we know our address, we know our parents. So it's up to us if we will also collect other information about us towards other people. No? Gaining knowledge plus experience is equals to gaining wisdom. So presumably, it means to know first and foremost one's own character and it is important because only by knowing one's character can be aware of one's limitations and avoid likening oneself to the gods. So if you know your character, if you know yourself, you will know how to limit yourself. Okay, so if you know that you are a person who easily gets angry, no, you will know how to limit yourself in other situations or other circumstances. Na I will manage my anger. I will not be. I will not be angry towards this person. I will not. Uh, I will not. What do you call this one? Um, be ang be angry. Hindi ako magigalit sa kanya kasi alam ko limitahan yung aking init ng ulo. Knowing thyself is an obstacle to acknowledging and making peace with constantly changing values. So as we grow older, as we age, as we gain wisdom, knowledge, we constantly change our values. So if, if in high school we are the known to be the goody-goody two-shoes of the teachers, so as we go along in college, so we can see that I am not like those na eh. I evolved. So, hindi na ako yung goody two-shoes na te goody two-shoes sa mga teacher. So, I can have my own, what do you call this one? My own direction, my own instruction. Okay? So, there. So, if you know thyself, their example, kind of person that limits your freedom considerably. So, if you are that kind of person who is always kind to everybody that you know. So, you limit your freedom because, ah, ikaw yung taong sobrang bait. So, they already know you as that kind of person. So, hindi mo na parang ang hirap na baguhin yung uh, pag, pagtingin nila sa sa'yo as that kind of person. So, example, you might have been the one who chose to be a milky person who loves boba or a goody two-shoes person but once these features are built into your self-image you have very little say in what direction your life is going like for example the best example of this one is um you went to Jollibee with your mother and your mother didn't ask you what would you like because you already knew that you are that chicken person guy or girl so you don't have the choice to choose from the menu. So if you like to experience with the you if you like to experience the taste of the burger steak, well your mother just ordered you a chicken and so be it, you have to eat the chicken. So I know that I do not know. Alam ko pero hindi ko alam. Like for example in this situation, alam ko pumasok ako sa college pero wala akong kaalam, alam. Okay? So that according to Socrates that is the true wisdom. The true wisdom is knowing you know nothing. So it's like a blank slate, a clean cartolina that you don't know nothing. Okay, so self discovery at its finest. The process of self discovery is one in which a person is guided through self questioning and examination of one's own thoughts words and actions in order to reach or her own conclusions. So just like Eureka, right? Ah, ginto pala yun. So try answering your math questions. No? 
while answering, ah, okay, so ganito pala yung process ng math. So, self-discovery. So, here, an, an unexamined life is not worth living. So, what is this? So, if you don't examine your life, what is the worth of living? So, you try to examine your life na, ah, okay, so I like the color red also, not like, Gusto ko rin pala yung color red, hindi lang yung color blue or yung yellow. So, four pieces of Socratic advice to live an, an, an examined life. So, know yourself. So, how will you know yourself? So, know yourself by your own self or by other people as well. So, try putting down values or traits that you know about yourself and other people that other people judge you or other people label about you, then try to cross out things lang. Turn autopilot off. So, because of this time, we are living in an autopilot situation. Why not we turn that off? So, how will we turn that off? Through participating in class, having a conversation with other people, through messenger, or through e or through chat. Catching up with your friend. A little kamusta ka? Kamusta ka? Chat? is a very great tool to lessen anxiety or depression. A little kamusta ka will also be a little uplifting mood to the person who is reading this one. So leave your assumptions behind. Always remember that I don't care what other people around me think about me. So leave your assumptions behind. If they think na pabida ka sa sa group chat natin, sa MS team natin, bahala sila. If they want if they want to think that way, let them be. The next, spot the hurtful patterns. If we are already hurting in this kind of situation, why not we try not to tolerate things up? Because when we try to tolerate things up, mas lalo kang masasaktan. Unless ngayon, alam mo na, nasasaktan ka in that situation at Mapipigilan mo na. Okay, we have here. Socrates believed in the dualism of reality. So it is the nature of man in compromising with the body, which is, imp which is imperfect and changeable, and soul that is perfect and unchanging. So dualism of reality, he believed that there is a body, there is a body, and there is a soul. So the body is the imperfect and changeable. Why is that so? Because that is the physical substance. So we can see or we can see the body. We can change the body. If if you are tan and you want to be white, we can change that. No? Ka lang ng gluta tayo, huwag ka lang magpa-araw. And then, there you go. Now change na yung body mo. Well, the soul, it is unchanging. So, maganda ka nga, Pero yung budhi mo naman, is hindi naman ganun kaganda, hindi mababago yung soul mo. So, yun at yung ka pa rin as a person. Like for example, um, yun nga, so may team ka, kung gusto mo magpapute and all and all, ikaw pa rin yung taong yun. Right? Kasi hindi nagbabago ang, ang soul ng isang tao. So according to most substance dualists, Mind and body are capable of causally affecting each other. This form of substance dualism is known as interactionism. So the mind or the soul always interacts with the body. You know? So if the soul or the mind think that I want to be, I want to be white, I want my skin to be lighter, and so be it. The body will now be changed, but the soul will not be changed, okay? So next, what do we have here? The next philosopher is Plato. So who is Plato? He is a writer in the Western literary tradition and one of the most penetrating, wide-ranging, and influential authors in the history of philosophy. So just like what I've said, so he is a writer of Socrates, books, knowledge, wisdoms, and experiences. So, he also founded the first university and in, and in it, he trained his greatest student, the equally influential philosopher, which is 
Aristotle. So see the resemblance of Socrates, Plato, and then Aristotle. So Plato's theory of form stating that the physical world we know is but a shadow of the real one. So we are now here in the physical world and according to Plato, this is just a shadow and the real world or the real one is in ourself. So, kaya nga minsan, di ba, sinasabihan tayo na may, ah, may sariling mundo ka. Because that is your true world because that is your true self. So, let's try to read some Plato's quotes. Love is a serious mental disease. I know, nauulul tayo sa pagmamahal. When the mind is thinking, it is talking to itself. Of course, if you are thinking, you are talking to yourself, just like the Socratic method of questioning. You are actually fostering your critical thinking skills. Human behavior flows from three main sources, desire, emotion, and knowledge. So later on, we will go through that, the dualism of self by Plato. Here. Instead of dualism, rather, it's tripartite soul. So there are three parts of the human soul, according to Plato. We have the appetitive, the spirited, and the mind, or the nuo. So let's try to find out what are these different souls. So Plato's identification of three, of three distinct elements of a person's inner life is unique and can be validated by directly Turning inward to one's own experience to the self. Why inward? They are talking about inward realization of experiences because the main principle of identifying yourself is through your soul, which is found inside of all of us. So each person's soul is divided into three different parts, and these parts are simply indifferent balance from one person to the next. Um, specifically, we have different desires as a person. We have different emotions in terms of our spirit. And most importantly, we have different minds in terms of reasoning out. So this, what is an appetitive soul? So according to this picture, what do you desire the most? So it includes your desire, it could be your pleasure, physical satisfaction, comfort, etc. So according to Plato, the appetitive part of the soul is the one that is accountable for the desires in people. So specifically, according to the lifespan or developmental lifespan, the most age who are very and um, it's crucial in terms of their appetitive soul are the babies because they need instant, instant pleasure, instant desire, and they need attention. It is accountable for the effortless craving required to stay alive, like hunger, thirst, and for pointless cravings like desire to overfeed. So it's our for survival matters like hunger, thirst, um, love, affection, and so on. Now, we have here the spirited soul. So what is this spirited soul? It includes the basic human emotions like love, anger, ambitions, sadness, loneliness, and jealousy. So the spirited soul produces the desire that love, victory, and honor specifically emotions. In the just soul, the spirit acts as an implementer of the rational soul, making sure that the rules of reason are adhered to it. So when we talk about the rational soul, this will be your mind. So the just soul acts like an intimidator. So if you feel or if you think you are sad in that situation, the spirited soul will act sad. So emotions like indignation and danger are the impact of the disappointment of the spirit. So sometimes when we are disappointed, we feel sad and our spirit is very low. Someone might respond to the claim that the, co that the soul comprises of three parts. 
Here, what is the rational mind or the rational soul? It is considered to be the most superior of the three components and the superpower that controls the affairs of the self. Bakit superpower tong mind? Um, like just what I've said, it is the rational soul. It is the part of our body which we can reason out. So it is the thinking element in every human being which decide what is factual and merely obvious, judges what is factual and what is untrue, and intelligently makes sensible decisions. So that's why we are very different from animals. Human beings and animals are different from one another because us humans can rationalize our thought while the animals, so a person become just and virtuous when these three components are in harmony in each other. So... Plato argued that the spirit was the last part and important, bringing about balance between appetite and rational. So, the appetite, you feel hungry. What is your thinking? I want to eat. I want to have this food. Please, I want to eat this right now. So, what will be the spirit? So, you have to balance things out. Are you angry? Are you sad? Or are, will you be happy if you have eaten that food already? The three parts of the soul reflects the three parts of the society. So what is that society? The man, the world, and everyone, right? So that is the three parts of the soul. Therefore, there has to be three parts in the soul since man has fervent appetites, even if he does not allow through on the desires all the time. Spirit is in the concert that helps man in ensure ensuring the two forces are in check while offering the human beings vitality and life devoid of the three parts the souls would would fail to be just and the community would fail to neither be unjust nor function so you can, you can see that the soul is always in the middle part of the appetitive and the mind the man and the society so there you go according to plato we have Three souls that are tripartite soul, the appetitive one, the spirited one, and the rational one. So we have discussed the two Greek philosophers, which are Socrates and then Plato.